Hello everyone, today I am going to talk about labyrinthitis. So before entering my topic, I would like to introduce my topic. So labyrinthitis is an inflammation or swelling of the labyrinth. So labyrinth is a part of our inner ear. It is the main part to control our balance. It is also called the house of vestibular system. So labyrinthitis is a, a swelling and inflammation of the labyrinth that is the part of the inner ear that helps the control balance. It is a unilateral vestibular dysfunction, a balance disorder inflam involving inflammation of labyrinth house of vestibular system. So labyrinthitis is a inflammation process that mainly caused by the viral infection or bacterial infection the clinical features of the labyrinthitis is vertigo means loss of balance tinnitus means ringing sensation and fever and chill is very common because it is inflammation process then sometimes dizziness and ear pain so it is all about in introduction of the labyrinthitis so my topic is related to inner ear so uh, there is uh, present the inner ear structure so inner ear mainly mainly divided into three parts vestibular cochlear and three semicircular canal now we'll see the definition of the labyrinthitis so as as i told before that labyrinthitis is a inflammation or swelling of the labyrinth that is a part of the inner ear so here definition a inflammation of the inner ear or the nerve of connect in inner ear to the brain so labyrinthitis is a inflammation of the labyrinth or the nerve of the inner ear that is mainly connect to the brain it is a inflammation of the inner ear caused by any viral or bacterial infection with a characteristic by vertigo tinnitus and sometimes nausea and vomiting so as i told that vertigo means loss of balance and tinnitus means ringing sensation in our ear so it is uh, all about definition of labyrinthitis so we will see the types of labyrinthitis uh, labyrinthitis mainly three types uh, labyrinthitis classified into three that uh, first one diffuse serous labyrinthitis diffuse separative labyrinthitis and circumscribed labyrinthitis so diffuse serous labyrinthitis it is the types of acute labyrinthitis with a mild to severe vertigo and vomiting diffuse serous labyrinthitis it is a types of labyrinthitis is a acute types of labyrinthitis is mainly caused by the viral infections and uh, the clinical features is mild to moderate vertigo means loss of balance and vomiting nausea and vomiting second one diffuse separative labyrinthitis it also the acute types of labyrinthitis the acute serous labyrinthitis is mainly caused by the build up or accumulation of the uh, exudative fluid in our in the inner ear so that's why it's called that separative lab uh, separative diffuse separative labyrinthitis so diffuse separative labyrinthitis mainly caused by the build up ex extreme level of excessive level of uh, exudative fluid so second types is circumscribed labyrinthitis there is a thickening or the erosion bony capsule usually of, of the horizontal semicircular canal so here formation of the bony or uh, some bony structure in the inner ear mainly it is horizontally placed the semicircular canal semicircular canal is a part of the inner ear so it is uh, the types of labyrinthitis first one diffuse serous labyrinthitis second one diffuse supportive labyrinthitis and third one circumscribed labyrinthitis now we will see the etiology or causative factor of the labyrinthitis so uh, labyrinthitis it is the inflammation process so it is mean caused by the infection so infection means bacterial or viral mainly the viral infection so labyrinthitis usually follow the art of infection or another part of the body such as otitis media otis media means 
the inflammation of the middle ear it leads to the labyrinthitis or the meningitis infection in our brain uh, or the meninges or the labyrinthitis is almost always caused by the viral infection so uh, it is mainly caused by the viral infection and uh, really bacterial infection or any other cause that head injury new plasma of the middle ear uh, uh, or the drinking huge amount of the alcohol and particular some medicines such as aspirin it's aspirin so it's lead the uh, labyrinthitis and another cause is flying and scuba diving and some upper respiratory infections and allergy so it is all about a uh, etiology or causative factor of labyrinthitis so etiology or causative factor is viral infection and there is many other other is uh, head injury neoplasm and inner ear or any uh, surgery mastoid surgery or as uh, medication like aspirin and scuba diving and upper respiratory tract infection so now we will see the pathophysiology of labyrinthitis so pathophysiology means how it's occur how it's affect our uh, body so pathophysiology of labyrinthitis first uh, due to etiological factors due to etiological factor as we know that etiological factor of the labyrinthitis is mainly caused by any viral or any bacterial infections so any uh, viral or bacterial infections it leads to inflammation of the labyrinth so due to any bacterial or viral in infection entering any bacteria or virus in our body so it's entering to the blood stream and it affect our labyrinth or our inner ear so it's inflamed the labyrinth so it leads to ossic ossification of the space so now what is the meaning of ossification so here ossification means formation of the new bone so ossification of the space meaning formation of the new bone in our in the inner ear so due to ossification due to form, forming a new bone some pressure is created in our in the inner ear due to some pressure uh, it leads the clinical features like uh, vertigo tinnitus and vomiting nausea etc so pathophysiology means uh, entering the virus or bacteria to our blood stream and it's affect the labyrinth that is a part of the inner ear then it leads to ossification of the space space means inner ear ossification means uh, formation of the new bone in our inner ear and it leads to the clinical features it leads we see that clinical features that vertigo tinnitus and ringing uh, tinnitus and uh, uh, ear pain fevers next we will see the clinical features of the labyrinthitis so clinical features mean sign and symptom uh, how we detect that it is uh, it is the inflammation of the labyrinth so clinical features of the labyrinthitis is extreme vertigo extreme vertigo dizziness extreme vertigo vertigo means loss of balance then sensorineural hearing loss sensorineural hearing loss that the hearing loss mainly caused by the damage of the inner ear that uh, that the tinnitus then fullness and otorrhea otalgia otorrhea otalgia otorrhea means or drains some fluid from our ear so it's called the uh, uh, otorrhea and otalgia means ear pain and nausea vomiting sometimes fever uh, neck pain depression anxiety and nystagmus nystagmus means the un involuntary involuntary eye movement so th this is the clinical feature of the labyrinthitis so first extreme vertigo then tinnitus then otalgia otorrhea fever nausea vomiting neck pain depression because of this disease condition patient uh, patient can uh, suffer from anxiety or depression and nystagmus means involuntary eye movement next we will see the diagnostic evaluation 
how we detect that it is the uh, labyrinthitis or it is a uh, inflammation of the inner ear so first we have to see uh, we have to take the history collection we we have to take the history from the patient uh, the family history or the present or past medical history any surgical history is there or not then physical examination we will do the physical examination means head to toe assessment uh, any other uh, this is condition is there or not then hearing test we have to do the hearing test like uh, audiometry audiogram inspection of the ear then cvc means complete blood count ct scan mri eeg and eng eeg means electro encephalogram and eng means electro nystagmus gram so diagnostic evaluation so first we have to take the history from the patient then uh, physical examination we have to do the physical examination means head to toe assessments then hearing test then cvc ct scan mri uh, eeg electro encephalopathy gram and eng means electro nystagmus gram then pharmacological management so uh, pharmacological medic management means medication vertigo can be treated with the medication such as the medicalizine or the scuba flalamine so pharmacological management vertigo can be treated with the medication such as the medicalizine uh, scuba flalamine then antiviral drugs uh, uh, antiviral drugs aclovir femaclovir and vela cyclovir patient with the severe nausea and vomiting uh, we we can give to the patient antiemetic drugs and uh, like benzodiazepine help the vestibular suppression help as a vestibular suppression so medical management uh, we have to reduce the clinic uh, clinical features like vertigo so we can give to the patient the medications medicalizine or antiviral lab drugs to reduce the inflammation process uh, and the vomit for the vomiting and nausea we can give the antiemetic drugs it's all about pharmacological or medications pharmacological management or the medications next we'll see the non pharmacological management vestibular rehabilitation therapy uh, vestibular re rehabilitation therapy is a highly effective way to substantially reduce limit the radial dizziness mm. from labyrinthitis rehabilitation exercise can speed up the brain natural ability to adjust the problem with balance and following exercise are include learning how to cooperate the eyes and head movement and improve the balance and head movement next surgical management in the labyrinthitis resulting for otitis media if the labyrinthitis ca uh, caused by the otitis media so we have to perform the laryngostomy and uh, evacuate the effusions uh, any any uh, if the labyrinthitis caused by the fluid build up the exudative fluid so we can uh, evacuate the effusion or evacuate the uh, fluid or drainaging this fluid and surgical exudations of coleostoma and labyrinthectomy so it is the surgical process surgical management so if the labyrinthitis caused by the otitis media means inflammation of the middle ear so we can perform the myringostomy and if any uh, accumulation fluid is there so we can uh, evacuate this fluid and surgical exudation the coleostoma and lang labyrinthectomy then next the complication the complication of the labyrinthitis is mainly meningitis meningitis means inflammation of the meninges then permanent balance disability because the clinical feature of the labyrinthitis is loss of balance so patient can lose their permanent balance and permanent hearing loss so patient loss their hearing activity so it is all about complication of the labyrinthitis 
so i will summarize my topic so labyrinthitis is an inflammation or uh, swelling of the labyrinth it is a part of the inner ear mainly it's also called the haut of vestibular system so the uh, la, the clinical feature is vertigo tinnitus uh, ear pain um, fever nausea vomiting neck pain then uh, clinic uh, diagnostic we can uh, take the history from the patient then head to toe assessments uh, then hearing test eeg eng cvc then we can give to the patient to reduce the vomiting nausea antiemetic drugs then uh, uh the vertigo to uh, reduce the vertigo tinnitus we can give to the patient uh, medicline and antiviral drugs and the complication of the la labyrinthitis is meningitis loss of permanent loss of balance and permanent hearing loss so it's all about my topic thank you all